Hello everyone, this is Ripple Buroid and you are watching my YouTube channel. My dear friends, in this particular session, as you can see on the board, we are going to discuss about metallosins. Okay, we are discussing about what? Metallosins. So my dear friends, first of all, we start to understand what exactly metallosins are all about. So to begin with, they are basically coming into the category of OMC. Yes, you got it right. It's organometallic compounds in which the metal is placed between the two planar polyhepto ligands. Okay, once again I repeat, metallocenes are organometallic compounds in which a metal is placed between two TWO, okay, it is two planar polyhepto ligands. Now see, the word ligands will make you strike that yes, we are talking about complex compounds because there is going to be a metal as well as a ligand. You are absolutely right. Next thing is, we like to understand the word planar where all the atoms are going to be in the same plane. So we call it as what? Planar. Now we come to your polyhepto. Now here, what happens is there are people who try to break the words. No doubt, no problems with that. You have to. So that you understand the meaning of that. So poly means it's more than one. Perfect. Hepto. Now here what happens is there are students who feel that hepto means it's related to seven. So now when you combine both of them, Okay, many seven. Sounds irrelevant. Yes. So here, poly means many. Yes, no doubt about that. But here, hepto means it is related to a concept called as hepticity. What is it? It is a concept related to what? Hepticity. Now, when you talk about a hepticity, a hepto ligand, what exactly they are? My dear friends, the first point is that those are the ligands which are hydrocarbons. Okay, so I just write it down as HC, hydrocarbon, in which the carbon is going to be the donor atom. Now normally what happens is, when you talk about a donor atom of a ligand, so it donates two electrons for a donor atom. That is what is the normal definition of a ligand is. But here they are coming into a different category. So here in this case, carbon is a donor atom and every carbon donates only a single electron. Alright? Next thing is, it is being denoted as, hepticity is denoted as eta raised to x. What it is related to? Eta raised to x. Now what does that x stands for? Yes, the x stands for the number of carbon atoms which are simultaneously attached to the same metal. Once again, I repeat, this X stands for the number of carbon atoms. Now, please be very careful. This word is simultaneously being bonded. So simultaneously means what? One, at, one exactly at the same time. It's not one at a time. So obviously simultaneously means obviously it has to be what? To the same metal. So that is what his X is. And also, I told you, that every carbon atom donates one electron. So that means whatever is the number of carbon atom, that many number of electrons are donated. Am I right? So this is what is hepto is all about. So when I use the word polyhepto, poly means more than one. Okay, hepto is related to hepticity, where a hydrocarbon is going to behave as a ligand. So it means that polyhepto is where a uh, hydrocarbon behaving as a ligand where the value of x has to be greater than 1. Or in simple words, we are going to make sure that there is a hydrocarbon where more than 1, that means at least 2 carbon atoms, are simultaneously attached to the same metal. Okay, that is what is called as a polyhepto ligand. So I hope this concept is clear to everyone. Alright, now we go to the next one and that is now here we say a metal is placed between the two planar polyhepto ligands. So my dear friends, what you do is, let us consider 
the planar polyhaploid ants, okay, they are slice of bread. Okay, they are what slices of bread. Two of them, okay. So one below the plane, one above the plane, like that. Now, when there are two slices of bread, and you consider metal as say vegetables in between the two. So you guess it right now. What am I talking about? Oh yes, it's sandwich. Okay, it is what sandwich, and therefore we are also going to call these compounds as sandwich compounds. What are we going to call these as sandwich compounds? And it's only because of their arrangement of the metal as well as the planar polyhepto ligands, right? Okay, so far so good, fantastic. Now we move on to the next one, and that is in most of the metallocene, the most common planar polyhepto ligand is going to be a derivative of cyclopentadiene. What it is going to be? It's a derivative of cyclopentadiene. Okay, now try to understand this. It's a derivative, so that means the one which is obtained from. Okay, cyclo means it's having a ring structure. Penta, so five. Di means two double bonds, alternate double bonds. All right. So as a result of it, we come to this particular conclusion, and that is, these are the five carbon atoms forming a ring, and there's going to be an alternate double bond. Right. So there are five carbon atoms out of which the apical carbon atom. If you just ignore that, the rest of the four carbon atom contains one hydrogen, because carbon is tetravalent. And my dear friends. To satisfy the same tetravalency, the apical carbon should have two hydrogen. All right. So four carbon having one hydrogen in it, and the apical carbon having two electron, uh, two hydrogen. So that means total number of hydrogen are how many? Six. And therefore, we get it as C five H six. This is my dear friend, cyclopentadiene. This is what cyclopentadiene. But did I use the word cyclopentadiene is going to behave as a planar polyhepto ligand? No, my dear friends. See, I've used the word over here derivative. So the one which is going to be obtained from. Now, if you have a look at the structure very well, and if I want to get the derivative of this, so it's very common that I need to replace a hydrogen. Because if I want to replace a carbon, I have to break the ring. Because carbon is a ring member. So it will require more amount of energy. And that's not thermodynamically feasible. So what we do is it involves the removal of a yes a hydrogen or I call it as an acidic hydrogen. So H plus ion is removed, and that is going to give you what C five H five minus. Okay, and this is being called as there is a slight change now in the naming of this is we call this as cyclopentadiene. What do we call it as? Cyclopentadiene, C five H five minus. So this is my difference about what the planar polyhaploidia. So there are two of them. Okay, C five H five, C five H five, two of them. And in between, who's going to be there? Oh yes, it's the metal. So the first compound which was being considered under the heading of metallocene was ferrocene. What it was? Ferrocene. Now, my dear friends, you are smart enough. I know that very well. So, from the name itself, you understood now. Ferrocene. Okay, so that means that metal I'm referring to is what iron. All right. So you already know which is going to be a planar polyhedral ligand. From the name of this compound, you came to know that yes, the metal is going to be iron, and therefore, what we say is the ferrocene when you talk about. The formula, which is, we have C five H five twice Fe. Now I'll show you the bonding also in this, so that you understand this very well. The bonding is, I have one ring like this. I show Fe over here, and then I show another ring like this, and I will show this circle, so you understand this. It's an alternate double bond. Now the bonding is this way. Okay, Fe is being bonded to this alternate double bond. It's a pi electron system, a pi electron cloud. 
Now, my dear friends, it is this five electron cloud which is responsible for holding all the five carbon atoms together. And Fe is attached to that pi electron cloud. So it is very obvious that Fe is attached to five carbon atoms. Okay, so all the five carbon atoms are simultaneously attached to Fe. Can you check it out over here? The number of carbon atoms which are simultaneously attached to the same metal, that is what is the value of X. So here it is five, and therefore I write down over here eta raised to 5. So eta raised to 5, C5, H5 twice Fe. This is what I get. Okay, this is going to be the structural formula. All right, and this is going to be the molecular formula. Eta raised to 5, I'm sure you got it well, where all the five carbon atoms are bonded to what? Fe. And there are two of them, and then we have got Fe. So that means what? We say the structure is or the name of this is called as ferrocene. Similarly, we also have cobaltocene. So you understand this very well? Yes, the formula will be eta raised to 5, C5, H5, twice, and this is CO, capital C and small o. Similarly, we have nicolosin, where we have eta raised to 5, C5, H5 twice Ni. So these are certain examples, all of which comes under the broad heading of what? Metallocene. And metallocene are basically a part of organometallic compounds. All right. So these are some of the examples, my dear friends, with respect to metallocenes. And I'm sure you have understood the introduction part of this. Please have a look at it very well so that you get the better understanding of the intro part of metallocene.